the topics in this seminar, we will uh, take you through uh, some earthquake experiences with irregular structures. These are actual structures in actual earthquakes. Then we will talk about horizontal structural irregularities and the code regulations we have in place in order to deal with those, uh, followed by vertical structural irregularities and, and the same way the code provisions that we have in place uh, that enable us to, uh, to uh, deal with structural irregularities in design. We have uh, on every slide pretty much the relevant section numbers, uh, which we always feel uh, help you uh, find the right things in, in the code. In, in any case, the section numbers that we have on most slides will work with both AC705, which I'm sure most of you are using now, they will also work with AC710, which has been adopted by the 2012 IPC, and those will be the section numbers when 2012 IPC is adopted by your jurisdiction, which probably is in the near future. In rare cases where AC705 and AC710 section numbers are different, we clearly indicate that on the slides. Now, in this entire discussion on structural irregularities, you will hear a lot about configuration, structural configuration. The word, this is dictionary meaning of the word, it means relative arrangement of parts, something produced by such arrangement. So this is what we are talking about uh, when we mention uh, uh, structural configuration in connection with irregularities and what we do about irregularities in design. We need to consider horizontal configuration, how parts are arranged in plan, and also vertical configuration, how parts are arranged as you go up the height of a structure. Both have uh, impact on how a structure uh, uh, responds to earthquake ground. The, as I just said, the configuration of a structure can significantly affect its performance during a strong earthquake that produces the ground motion contemplated in IBC AC7. So the so-called design earthquake ground motion performance of a structure will very much depend upon its configuration. In the picture, you see the Ministry of Telecommunication after the 1985 Mexico earthquake the L shape of the building had a lot to do with what happened to the structure, and so did the height of the structure, which is part of a configuration. If the structure were taller or shorter, significantly taller or shorter, uh, terrible earthquake damage would have been avoided. In the Mexico earthquake in particular, only structure in a particular height range were badly hit. Now, this is extremely important. The, the seismic design provisions we have in our codes, which today would be based on the IBC, which adopts AC7 for seismic design purposes. The provisions were all developed considering irregular buildings. This is a matter of record. Past earthquakes have repeatedly shown that irregular buildings suffer greater damage than regular buildings, sometimes incomparably worse damage. I mean, if you visit an earthquake site, uh, you, you, will, you will pretty readily see, in, it depends on where it is and, and how many regular buildings there are, but, but you see this ex very, very clearly. This, this is one thing that always stands out. And importantly, this happens even with good design and construction of the irregular buildings. 
So it is the configuration that's the problem, not the design or the construction. Now, if the design is deficient, obviously that adds to the problem, but the configuration itself is an inherent problem. 